Pastor Phil and uh, ladies for singing that song. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. I'd like to uh, preach a message, uh, another kind of a topical message, and uh, I like... I like expository, but what I'm going to do this morning is, is I've picked several different passages that speak to the issue of praying for missionaries, praying for missionaries. We're wrapping up our missions month, and, uh, and next week uh, we'll start our series in the book of Haggai. We'll get there next week, but, but right now, one more missions uh, message, and this is praying for missionaries, and so... I'm going to look here at 2 Corinthians chapter 1. I'm going to read from verse 5 down through verse 11. Then we'll pray and look at this in several other verses as well. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 now, and I'll begin reading in verse 5. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer, or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength insomuch that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Ye also, helping together, by your prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. Our Father, we pray that as we look at these these verses and several others as well, that uh, your Holy Spirit would guide us and lead us, uh, that we would grow in our understanding of the need to pray for missionaries. Lord, please motivate us this morning. May we rededicate ourselves to once again pray. Pray for missionaries. May we be faithful in that regard. So now, Lord, we ask once again that you would do the work in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praying for missionaries. It's an important thing. We've talked about going, surrendering the call. Of course, God calls us each to be a missionary in some aspect. And He places that uh, desire and that burden on your heart to reach somebody with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And He extends the call to you. And it's our responsibility to answer that call and say, Here am I, send me, and go and do what He wants us to do. Last time we talked about the, the necessity of the ministry of giving. It's important for us to give towards the work of God, to give for missionaries, that they might be able to continue doing the work that God has called them to do. And at the conclusion of the service this morning, uh, we'll take a moment and we'll make that promise to God. We'll give you some instructions on that in just a moment. I trust you've been praying about that, uh, that the Lord would guide you and lead you. Uh, But we'll make that decision as far as giving and that commitment as far as giving here Uh, in just a little bit. But today, I want to talk about the necessity, the importance of praying for missionaries. And if uh, if we were to to study out church history and see some of the great workings of God and revivals that broke out and some of the great uh, missionary endeavors, we would see that they began with prayer. They began with prayer meetings, people getting together, burdened for souls, burdened for what God wanted to do, and they would pray that God would send laborers. Isn't that what Jesus said? Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that He would send forth laborers. And so we ought to be praying, not only praying that God would send, but praying for the missionaries that are already sent. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to look at this morning several passages where we see the Apostle Paul, a missionary. We see him and, and his, his relationship with his supporting churches and specifically his requests for prayer. Uh, we try to be faithful in sharing the prayer needs of our missionaries. Every Sunday morning, uh, we'll share a prayer letter. We'll share some prayer needs. We'll put the picture of the missionary up on the wall and we'll remind ourselves of the great needs that they have. Every Sunday night, we gather together and we, and we take the, pr- the missionary prayer letters and we look at them, we read through them, and, and then we pray for missionaries. It's important for us to do that. Uh, Perhaps this morning you picked up one of the prayer calendars that was sitting at the doors. Uh, There's a prayer calendar that's been made up so that you can be reminded to regularly pray for not just our church folks, but to pray regularly for our missionaries. And in fact, if you follow that prayer calendar, you will be praying through each of our supporting missionaries. Um, You'll be praying for them twice in the month. And and so, you know, it's important for us to be faithful praying for missionaries. But it's not just because the pastor stands up and says, you got to do something, you got to pray. It's not just because of that. It's because of what God's Word says. And that's what we're going to look at tonight, uh, or this morning rather, is God's Word and uh, see what it says about prayer. Now, just a thought on prayer here. Before we get into specifics of praying for missionaries, just a thought on prayer. Sometimes... uh, we, we get a thought in our, in our brains, in our minds, that why, why do we pray? You know, it seems like, well, God knows what's going on. He's going to do what He's going to do, right? God's in charge of everything. And why is it that, why should we even pray? I mean, if God knows everything, I mean, He knows even what we would say if we are going to pray. And why do we even do this? I want you to think about this. God chooses to accomplish His will by responding to the faith of His people in prayer that He might receive the glory that He deserves. I've been thinking a lot about that. I I put some thought into into that sentence. Let me read it again. God chooses to accomplish His will by responding to the faith of His people in prayer that He might receive the glory that He deserves. There is an effect of prayer. Not only does God command us to pray, but that is the the way that God has chosen to accomplish His will through our prayers. And I want to give an example of that. Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29. You won't find this in your notes. Uh, As I was studying and praying, and and, uh, the Lord kind of gave this passage to me after I had finished the notes. Um, But you'll see this. Jeremiah 29. Old Testament passage. uh, Jeremiah, a prophet that God used the weeping prophet, as he's been called. It's such a heart for God's people. Jeremiah 29, I'm going to start reading in verse 10. Now, Jeremiah is a prophet that God had used to prophesy not only the the, the 70 years of captivity when the children of Israel, because of their sin, would be held captive by their enemies, but then also to prophesy their return. And we see that here in Jeremiah 29, verse number 10. For thus says the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. What a great promise. God, through the prophet Jeremiah, gives this promise to the people of Israel. And the promise is 70 years from now. Seventy after seventy years, I mean, you can you can mark this down on the calendar. This is set in God's program. It's set in His plan. Seventy years. I'm going to bring you back to the land. Now that's set in stone, isn't it? <laughs> when God says something, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. But I want you to notice some other things. Verse eleven. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace 
and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall see me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity. And I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place whence I caused, uh, uh, caused you to be carried away captive. Do you see the method that God chooses to accomplish His will? First He says, this is the plan. You're coming back in 70 years. And then He says how it's going to happen. You will pray and I will answer. Isn't that interesting? I, I, I love the fact that God's got everything laid out and that He is totally sovereign. He's in control. But I love the fact that He chooses to Work his plan in response to the faithful prayers of his people. And so the question is, are you faithful to pray for God's will? God responds to our faith. And that's how he accomplishes his plan. And so now let's take that principle and apply that now to the necessity of praying for missionaries. Praying for missionaries. When we pray... We are helping missionaries. We just read that in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. And so back to 2 Corinthians 1. And, uh, and in verse 8 it says, For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength, and so much we despaired even of life. That was verse 8 of 2 Corinthians chapter 1. This is the prayer letter that the Apostle Paul has sent to his supporting churches. Isn't that interesting? You know, prayer letters... Uh, have, have been in the works <laughs> since the very first missionaries. So the Apostle Paul is writing out his prayer letter. He says, I want you to be aware. I, I've, I've been struggling and we're, we're having some real problems and I want to share with you the real problems that we've been facing. And so he, he writes out some of these issues. Uh, he says, we've, we've despaired even of life. Verse 9, we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in God who raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, and we trust that he will yet deliver us. The Apostle Paul says, we, we are confident that God will deliver us in our trials, in our difficulties. And this is the, this is the perspective of the, of the missionary. A missionary says, you know, I know that God will provide. I'm trusting the Lord. I'm depending on Him. He will provide. He's, he's delivered us in the past. He's delivering us now. He will deliver us in the future. I know it. I'm trusting the Lord. And you might just think, okay, well then, you know, I'm glad for you. That's great. Well, what can we do? I mean, you know, obviously God's got this thing handled and you're trusting Him, so what can we do? But the Apostle Paul then says in verse 11, Ye also helping together by prayer for us that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. He says, you're helping in this work of missions by your prayer. God is accomplishing His work. We are co-laborers together. In fact, the Bible says that we are uh, working together with God. So we work together with each other. We work together with God for the accomplishment of His divine purpose and His divine will. But notice he says why in verse 11. That for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons. The gift bestowed upon us. What is he talking about? I think he's referencing the deliverance that he had experienced uh, as he mentioned earlier on in this passage. This gift from God. Why? Because it is God that delivered them. And, and that's what he says there in verse uh, number 10. It is God that delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver, and, and we trust that he will yet deliver us. And so God gives this gift of deliverance by the means of, any, of, of many persons in verse 11. What do you mean by the means of many persons? Because many persons were praying. 
Many people were active, involved in praying for God's deliverance and God's will to be accomplished in the life of the missionary. So all these people are praying, and God gives the gift of deliverance to the missionary. And do you know what happens? Many give thanks. Many give thanks. Do you know God has a reason for you living on this earth? It is to bring glory to Himself. Our purpose is to bring glory to Himself. God, God doesn't need us to accomplish anything. <laughs> he does it all. And it's all His work. He doesn't need us. But you know He invites us in so that He might receive glory. And He expects us to pray for missionaries so that He receives glory. God chooses to accomplish His will by responding to the faith of His people in prayer that He might receive the glory that He deserves. And so the Apostle Paul says, you've been praying, many of you have been praying, God has delivered us, and now God receives thanks not only from me as the one delivered, but God receives thanks from you as the ones who are praying for it. More glory is given to God. Do you see how that works? It's important for us to pray for missionaries because when God answers that prayer, then we're all like, yes, praise God. And we're, we're thanking him for answering that prayer. And we're fulfilling the very purpose for which we were designed and, and created, to give him glory and give him praise. That's a neat thing. Makes me want to pray. You know, makes me want to pray and see God do something so I can give him some glory. So what do we pray for? I want to look at, uh, look at three things that we ought to pray for, and, and we'll see these in the missionary letters of the Apostle Paul. Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4. We need to pray for missionaries that they would have opportunities opportunities. Colossians chapter 4, verse number 2. The Apostle Paul, writing to a supporting church, the, uh, the church at Colossae, he says in verse 2, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving, with all praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. The Apostle Paul asks this church to pray that God would open doors of opportunity. Now you know how it is even in your own life. You want to be a witness to somebody you want to share the truth with somebody, and, uh, and you're, you're looking for an open door. Because there have been times in your life, just as there's been times in my life, where in all my zeal and passion and, and, and excitement to share the gospel with somebody, I kind of sometimes, I might want to just charge in and, and, and just start giving them the gospel because, boy, they need it, and the gospel is the power of God into salvation. I'm going to do it. I'm going to give them the gospel. But there have been plenty of times where I've done that, and I'm not saying I shouldn't have, but there are plenty of times when I've done that where it seemed evident to me the door had been closed. There, you know, the words that I was sharing were just bouncing off. I mean, it was like there was nobody home. They weren't even listening to me. They didn't get anything. But there have been plenty of other times as well when God has orchestrated something and I didn't even see it coming. I, I just kind of opened my mouth and start talking. And all of a sudden, man, this person's asking. They're excited. They want to know more. And, and they're just hungry for the word. You know what that is? That is a wide open door of opportunity. And I had nothing to do with opening that door. <laughs> God opens the door of the heart. God opens those opportunities. Now, how are we going to know where those opportunities are unless we're 
actually working for him and serving and moving. And, and uh, just like uh, Pastor Phil likes to quote the verse, I being in the way the Lord led me. Well, you get in the way and you, and you start to share and you start to be active in the work that God has called you to do. But you will notice that as you're in the way, God opens doors of opportunities. And when He opens those doors of opportunity, boy, you know this is the time to go. And you do. And God uses you. Why do we pray for missionaries? Because God needs to open doors of opportunity. You know, we've, we've heard from several missionaries this month. And I, in, a, in my mind, I constant, lately I'm thinking a lot of the Stinsons because of, of everything that's been going on in Ottawa, Canada. That's where they are in Ottawa. And, and not only the, the, uh, the crackdown of the government on the people uh, with, with regard to mandates and things like that, but the increased power that that government has to even limit the words that they may speak from the pulpit. We need to pray that God would open doors of opportunity to the Stinsons in Ottawa because there are, there are a lot of closed doors there. But it's not just the Stinsons. It's the Lescos. As they're sending out this work right here, they're sending out the Gospel and we need to pray that those pieces of mail will fall on doorsteps that are wide open to the gospel. So that when they open up the mail and they read that and they see the word of God, the Holy Spirit works in their hearts because it's an open opportunity. We need to pray for those opportunities. We need to pray for the Gideons. You know the Gideons have been restricted because of COVID incredibly. They've been restricted. They're not, out, they're not allowed to, to place Bibles in the, in the motels anymore. I don't know if you've been in a motel, but you might have noticed, hey, wait a minute, where's the Bible? Well, because of COVID, they've decided they need to take the Bibles out of there so not everybody's fingering them. It's a shame. The Gideon's ministry has been, has been restricted incredibly because of COVID. But not just that. You know, they have more freedom in in foreign countries than they do in this country where all the Bibles are printed. We need to pray for open opportunities, open doors. You know, for years and years and years, they would go to the uh, Light Coming College and they would give out Bibles at Light Coming College. And I don't know if they have an open opportunity now, but I know for, for many years that door was closed and they were not allowed to go to Light Coming College and give out Bibles. It was a closed door. Who can open that door? Only God can open that door. And that's why we have to pray. Right? Who else is going to... What, what are you going to do? I'm going I'm to write a letter to the president. I'm going uh, to write a letter to... You know, whatever. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go visit. I'm gonna, okay. But only God can open the door. Only God can open the door. So we pray. We pray for missionaries that the door might be open to them. What else do we pray for? We pray for the preaching of the ministries. Look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. <clears throat> 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Uh, once again, the Apostle Paul writing a letter to a supporting church. Verse number 1. Finally, brethren... Pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. He says, pray that the, the, the word of God would have free course, that it would be sped along, that it would be moved quickly, that it would be effective. Pray that the word of God, the ministry of the word would be effective, that it would have free course. That's a good prayer. That's a good prayer. You know, it's so important for us to pray for the, the, the Word, the ministry of the Word. Minis, uh, missionaries are called to reach people with the Gospel. But you know, the only way they can do that is by sharing this book. Because it is in the pages of this book that the Gospel is found. See, And, and it is the power of God into salvation right here in this book. And so... The, the missionary is called to a, a preaching and teaching ministry. It's a ministry that they 
deliver up, serve up, minister the Word. And so it's important for us not only to pray for open doors of opportunity, but it's important for us to pray for the preaching and teaching ministry of those, ministry, uh, of those missionaries. As they stand up in those pulpits or, or as they sit in that hut or wherever they may be sharing the truth of the Word of God, we need to pray that they're effective in their communication. Many of them trying to communicate the words of God in a language that they're not the best at, but they're working through it and they're trying the best they can to communicate in the heart language of the people the Word of God. We need to pray that the preaching and teaching ministry would be effective and that the Word of God would have free course. We need to pray for the, the translation efforts of the missionaries. The, uh, the Palmers are working now at translating the Bible into the language of the people there in Indonesia in that tribe. And so they're working at translating. How do they do that? Boy, it's a, it's a work of God. It's a work of God. And we need to pray that God would give them wisdom because the words that they put down on the page when they're translating the Bible will be the words that generations will use. Wow. That's a big deal, isn't it? We need to pray for the preaching and teaching ministry of our missionaries that they would be effective. Uh, look with me at Romans chapter 10. In Romans chapter 10, we see a great passage here that uh, the Apostle Paul lays out the way that God takes the gospel to the world. I love this. Romans chapter 10. Uh, we, we've already seen that God responds to the faith of His people. Now I want you to see the, the method by which God takes the word to the world. Romans chapter 10 verse 13. As it is written, I'm sorry, I'm in chapter 9. Here's chapter 13. Or, yeah. Anybody know where I'm supposed to be? <laughs> Chapter 10 <laughs> and verse 13. For whosoever, and you know this verse, shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now that's great. That whosoever means whosoever. You know, if, if you're alive today, you are a whosoever. Okay? You belong in that category. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All right, verse 14. How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? See, because it's, it's in the heart that man believeth unto righteousness. And that's why they call on the name of the Lord, because they, be, they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ in their heart. The calling is a response to the belief of the heart. Okay, how shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in Him of whom they have not heard? Well, that's a good question. And how shall they hear without a preacher? Also a good question. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. They have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah hath, saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You see, this is how God works it. This is how God works salvation in the lives of people. It comes through the word. Faith comes by the hearing and hearing by the word of God. And the word is preached or proclaimed by a sent one, a missionary. And so we need to pray that these sent ones, these preachers, these missionaries, would have an effective ministry of the word. Because it is the Bible that God uses to produce faith in hearts. They need to have an effective gospel preaching ministry. We need to pray for the preaching and teaching ministry of missionaries. One more thing to pray for. And, and there's a whole lot more, actually. We could, just, we could fill a whole list of things to pray for. But I want you to notice that we need to pray for protection as well. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Once again, the Apostle Paul, missionary, writing a letter 
to the church at Ephesus, a church he's ministering to, and a church that would be interested in ministering to him. He asks for prayer in this passage. Ephesians chapter 6, first I'm going to read verses 12 and 13. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. We look at that, that passage and we say, that's right, man, that's right, right where I'm living, you know. Uh, I, I'm being attacked by the devil. Boy, I need the armor of God. I need to protect myself. I need, I need God to protect me with his armor so that I can stand uh, and, and, and withstand those temptations that he's throwing at me all the time. But think about this with regard to a missionary. You know, missionaries are praying for a lot of different things. They're praying for the visa process. Things would go well with that. They're praying for finances, that they would have the, the money in order to build buildings or, or print Bibles or whatever it may be. They're, they're praying for health needs. They're praying for uh, government officials uh, that they might have favor. Uh, they're, they're, they're praying for so many different things. But ultimately, they are in a spiritual battle. And the enemy is not that government official. And the enemy is not even some physical ailment that they suffer with. The enemy is the devil himself. And it is Satan that is working to restrict the preaching and teaching ministry of God's men and women who are preaching and teaching the Word of God around the world. And so we must pray for the protection of these missionaries because they're out there on the battlefront being attacked every day by the devil himself. You know, missionaries are regular people. And you and I struggle with temptations, and you and I struggle with those, those problems and those spiritual issues and battles that we face. Don't you think they do as well? Absolutely. And the devil will do what he can to destroy their lives so that their preaching ministry is destroyed as well. And so we need to pray for the protection of these missionaries. You know, in this context, after talking about the, the real enemy, the devil and all his demons... The Apostle Paul says this in verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me. Wow. It says pray for, pray for your brothers and sisters. Pray for your, the, the, the fellow saints. Pray for me. Pray for me. that utterance may be given unto me. He's asking for prayer for this preaching ministry. That I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds, and therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Pray for the protection of these missionaries. In Romans chapter 15, and we finish here. In Romans chapter 15, the Apostle Paul once again asks for the church in Rome to pray for his protection. Romans 15 and verse 30. Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit that ye strive together with me in your prayers to God for me that I may be delivered from them that do not believe in Judea and that my service which I have for Jerusalem may be accepted of the saints. What a thought. He says, please pray for me. Pray for my protection. Because there are some that do not believe. That would rather this gospel preaching ministry not continue. But you know there are also some saints who do believe. That may not like it either. And God can use, or the devil can use them to oppress the preaching and teaching ministry of a missionary as well. That's hard. That's hard. The devil uses unsaved people. The devil uses even saved people. 
to try to ruin the ministry of a missionary. And so it's important that we pray. So who will pray? Who will pray for missionaries? Who will be so motivated to pray for missionaries that they're, they'd be willing to set aside time specifically to pray for missionaries? Who would, would gather together with the people of God when there are opportunities to pray for missionaries? Who would be motivated to read those prayer letters as they come in, to get on the prayer, le- the prayer list for the emails of the, of the missionaries and read those missionary prayer letters and take time to pray for them. Who will do that? Who would submit to that call to pray for ministry, the ministry of missionaries? We need to. And the, and the ministry here at Trinity Gospel Church, the, the ministry of, of uh, missions, is not just a giving ministry. Yes, we're going to give. And we're going we're to help ministry uh, missionaries by giving to them. But that's not it, folks. We've got to pray for missionaries. Because God can do things and will do things and He will work His plan by responding to the faith of His people so that He might receive the glory that He deserves. And so it is time for us to pray. It's time for us to pray for missionaries and watch God do His work that no money can accomplish. No dollar bill can do the work that God will do and accomplish by responding in faith or to the faith of His people as we pray. Lord, we need, to, we need to be motivated, and I pray that You would help us to see the necessity of praying for missionaries. And while there are so many reasons for us to pray, I I pray that first and foremost, A number one, we would pray for missionaries in order to bring glory to you. That as we are excited to see those wonderful answers to our prayers, you would receive honor, you would receive glory, that we would lift you up and praise you and fulfill the very purpose for our existence. Lord, I pray that Trinity Gospel Church would be a praying church, that we would submit to you in this call to pray for our missionaries. And this we ask in Jesus' name, amen.